Hello everyone. So let's continue our discussion on generated clocks for divide by two circuit. So in the last video, we came up with a relationship between this waveform and this waveform, and the relationship was divide by two. So this was pretty straightforward because it it was a binary division of the main clock period. This clock uh, sorry clock frequency. So the main clock frequency was just divided by two, and you get the, get this particular clock in this particular clock waveform so is there is there any other relationship that we find between this master clock and this particular gen clock so let's let's first what we'll do is we'll first identify edges for this particular master clock so let's say this is the first edge of the master clock this is the second edge of the master clock this third fourth fifth and so on so if you try to compare the if you try to find a relationship between the edges of the master clock along with the generator clock then then can we do something about it Okay, so let's let's try to identify that part. So, for example, if you see this particular waveform, the rise edge of the generated clock it starts at the first clock edge of the master clock. Okay, so the rise edge of the generated clock right, uh, starts at the first edge of the master clock, and then after this rise edge, the next edge that comes for the generated clock is the fall edge, and the fall edge of this particular generated clock comes at the third edge of the master clock. So we are talking about the edges of the master clock. It could be it could be rise, fall, anything. We are counting the number of edges of the master clock at which the generated clock edges comes. So if we start with rise, rise comes at the first edge of the master clock. Next, next edge of the generated clock, which is the fall edge, comes at the third edge of the master clock, and the next edge, which is the rise edge, comes at the fifth edge of the master clock. This is one thing to observe, and second thing to observe is if we are able to identify the the rise edge, fall edge, and then the rise edge in this order, then this actually completes your waveform. This actually completes your generated clock waveform. So combining these two observations, can we derive some properties out of it? Okay. So the same generated clock properties which had got a divided by two option over here, what we'll do is we'll not use the divided by two. Thing over here. What we'll be doing is we'll be defining this particular property of the generated clock with respect to master clock. So it it is in terms of edges. So it says one three five. So what does this represents? It says that the generated clock first rising edge, okay, the generated clock rising edge arrives at the first edge of the master clock. The generated clock falling edge arrives at the third edge of the master clock, and the generated clock the next rising edge arrives at the fifth edge of the master clock so any divided by 2s any divided by n circuit can also be any uh, clock waveform generated by the divided by binary division of the master clock can be represented by an edge option as well or can be represented the the generated clock properties can be derived with the help of the edge edge thing okay but the reverse is not always true for example if there is some edge if there is a waveform that is that can be defined only by the only by its edge characteristics it can't be defined by its divided by two characteristics so vice versa is not true but anything which is divided any generated clock which is a division a division a binary division of the master clock can always be represented by an edge option so let's look into another example for example we have a divide by 3 circuit okay so divide by 3 circuit the waveform so for example we have this black box where this black box receives an input of the master clock and the output of this particular black box is nothing but a generated clock which is a divide by 3 clock okay so let's say this is the master clock we'll take the same waveform that we had before this is the master clock and if we say a, a, a divide by 3 it means that three clock cycles represent one clock cycle at the output Okay, so this is one clock cycle. This is two clock cycle. This is three clock cycle. So three clock cycle at the input will now determine one clock cycle at the input. So basically, the the uh, the output output clock period is a multiple of if is a multiple of the master clock by three, something like this. Okay, but in this case, one thing to observe is first the duty cycle is not fifty percent. in this case the duty cycle is for example duty cycle is from this point for, for for what amount of time your your clock remains at the rise edge and for what amount of time your clock remains at the fall edge in this case the duty percent is 33 and 66% in that range so the rise edge is uh, the, the the clock pulse is at the rise edge for 66.666% and the and the clock and the clock edge is at the fall side for remaining 33.33% 33%. 
okay so duty cycle is not exactly 50 percent so this waveform and 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 the second of thing to observe is this waveform has got certain relationship with the master clock in terms of edges so in this case the right the rise edge of the generator clock comes at the first clock edge of the master clock the second fall edge of the generated clock comes at the fifth clock edge of the master clock and the third clock and the third rise edge of the generator clock can is coming at the seventh edge of the master clock so how how will this particular thing will be will filling up this particular table is in it's something like this so you have the generator clock the, the the name of the generator clock let's call it gen underscore clock the source name or the port name is the master clock and this is the this is these are the edges of the generator clock which defines the generator clock so it says that the gen clock arrives at the at the first the rise edge of the gen clock the first rise edge of the gen clock arrives at the first edge of the master clock the second fall edge the, the first fall edge of the gen clock arrives at the fifth edge of the master clock and the and the third and the second rise edge of the of the gen clock arrives at the seventh edge of the master clock so this this particular this particular feature of generator clock completely defines the generator clock relationship with the master clock okay so in this case this can't be this this can't be uh, substituted by a divide by option and the reason is this is not a 50% duty cycle okay had it been something like this something the 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 switching would have been something at this particular clock period it could have been defined by a by a binary division by a divided by 2 but in this case it can't be any any binary division of divided by 2 can be represented by an edge any binary division at the edge can be represented by a divided by 2 but the waveform which is which is of this kind can't be can, can't be even though it's a divided by circuit but it can't be represented by a divided by circuit okay so that's that's the problem that we see with the with the edge option and the, with the divide by two option but we have always have have a secondary option that will help to model the gen, gen clock waveform in terms of master clock so basically this is all about finding a relationship of the gen clock with the master clock and these are the options that are available with the designer so using these options using all of them or some of them of this of this particular options we need to find out a way how the gen clock can be related to the master clock okay so now what we'll do is we'll look into another circuit it's called divided by two inverted circuit so the waveform looks something like this so for example initially you had this master clock and the gen clock was a divided by two of the master clock so what if i just put an inverter over here let's say i put an inverter over here the waveform shape gets inverted it's still a divided by two of the master but the waveform shape get inverts in, gets inverted okay so this is how it will look like you have the master clock your wave your uh, your gen clock is an inverted form of the of the master clock okay it's a divided by two inverted form of the master clock so how do we represent this this kind of waveform so the best way is to do by edges so first let's represent the gen clock and give the name as gen underscore clock give the source name as master underscore clock okay and either you can use a divide by two option and use an inverted you, you just use the inverted options over here so this particular thing represents a gen clock with an inverted characteristics and the remaining will be crossed so these are remaining are not used or what you can do is there is one more way you can avoid the divide by divide by option and you can give edges option you can give 3 5 7 so 3 is the is the first is the first edge of the gen clock or the, or the first rise edge of the gen clock it says that the rise edge of the gen clock arrives the first rise edge of the gen clock arrives at the third edge of the master clock this the fall edge of the gen clock arrives at the fifth edge of the master clock and the and the next rise edge of the gen clock arrives at the seventh edge of the master clock so this will represent your waveform and 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 the inverted relationship between these two will be still obtained by the inverted options that we have over here okay so this is how this is how the inverted option is being used in to define the relationship between the gen clock and the master clock so what we'll do is since we have we, we have learned about edge we have learned about the edge characteristics of the gen clock we have learned about the divided by characteristics of the gen clock we have learned about the inverted characteristics of the gen clock what we'll do is we'll derive a waveform we, we, we'll have a we'll have a waveform generated over here and we'll try to derive the properties over here okay oh sorry the other way around we have we will be, we'll be giving you the properties over here and we'll try to derive the waveform out of this particular properties so let's try to do this in the next video thank you